Hello fellow tankers, this is Dauntless, and today I'm going to be playing a game in my tier 8 Chinese premium heavy tank, the 112. The map is Serene Coast, and as you can see the lineup does not look too promising. The 112 recently got a buff on its armor, but the 175 pen that it receives with its AP shells is a little bit lackluster, especially with like the Defender and the Patriot coming out, uh, making this tank not quite as competitive as it used to be in the past. Now, this game is a little bit worrisome for me, <laughs> just because of all the red players we have on our team. Now, don't get me wrong, not all red players are bad, but when you see this kind of lineup like you do here, you kind of get a feeling that it's not going to be good. And I know a lot of you requested that I show gameplay of games of me trying to carry or carrying um, when my team is not that good or the enemy team is better, and this is why I decided to upload this replay. So anyway, as you can see with the enemy lineup, they only have three heavy tanks and we have five. And their heavy tanks are somewhat lower tier. This means that the boot, they're going to have a hard time pushing the boot with their lack of heavy tanks. And with their tank destroyer lineup, it's not very practical for me, even though I am a heavy to push out this way. Yeah, I could steamroll probably past their heavies, but then pushing up on the hill with the amount of mediums and other vehicles they have, they would most likely roll the 1-2 line by the time I got back, and it would be, the cap would be gone by the time I could turn around and try to defend it. So in this situation, I have to realize that I'm a quick uh, heavy tank and do what I can to fight with the mediums. So with that being said, we'll get this game started. So the enemy lineup, they have this Type 61, and the Type 61 is a great tank, has good gun depression, and the, his, he's probably going to be over in the one line, um, along with the RU-251, the T-34-2, I mean that's my prediction, a lot of medium tanks like to push this way, and with my frontal armor and their lack of armor, it's actually good to push the medium tank flank with the 112 or even the IS-6 or any of these uh, preferential matchmaking vehicles that have the 175, 122 millimeter gun because you're guaranteeing that you don't have to shoot gold to pen them. They have no armor, your gun will have no problem contesting them and they will have a hard time penetrating you because of your armor. And so I do like to brawl with my uh, preferential matchmaking heavy tanks with the medium tanks just because they are quick enough and so far my prediction is wrong. I'm not seeing the RU or the Type 61. I mean, they could be here, but I would assume they'd be here faster than myself. Um, the T-34-2 is over here, and I'm able to put a nice high roll into him. Now, so far, over half the enemy team has yet to be detected, and that's a little bit worrisome. I hope they're not all on the 8-9 line. Unfortunately, I hit the very well-armored turret of the Dash 2, and I'm able to connect. So I'm pushing forward here because I'm seeing that there's no other resistance, and the fact that the body language, if you will, of this T-34 of backing off indicates that there's nothing coming to back him up. Normally, you stand your ground if you have allies coming, but because he was backing off, I realized that it's a good time to push. Now this Bulldog pushes forward, and this FB-207 artillery just has a hard-on for me the entire game, which is really unfortunate, but he's really not doing much damage. I decide that I need to do as much damage as possible because I see their other side is not doing the greatest. So I come around and I realize that this Leo and this Indy Panzer are giving me shots, but I don't want to just blow my shot. So I come around this corner and I decide to put one into the Jag Panther. I'm going to pause it really quick. In this situation, things are looking pretty good. But what you will notice is that our heavy tanks didn't push the way they were supposed to. I mean, they came along with me. Actually, I think they were kind of chilling on base for the longest time, and now they're showing up to the fight, which is a bad sign. I know I need to be super aggressive because as long as these guys are just camping up here, this flank could possibly fall, and if that happens, we're going to be completely screwed. So I am trying to be aggressive and I can afford to be with the armor of this thing and the fact that I'm able to haul down but I have two enemies to my front. The RU suddenly appears, and he's coming. Actually, he's not. He's on the other side of the track. But as of now, <laughs> here's the situation I'm in. My team is all just camping up here, watching as I push forward alone. Our bulldog died, 
he was the only one that had enough balls to push with me. Now I have a Yag Panther coming up behind me, and I'm facing three vehicles in front of me. This is when I need my team to actually push with me so we can win this game. As long as this flank is holding, these guys should be able to push through, and we should get behind them and win this game. This is where red players are frustrating. Now I have to take a shot from both behind me and in front of me, but I'm able to take out the Egg Panther, and now I'm down to 300 health. I'm able to use the carcass of the Egg Panther to get myself hauled down, and I decide to engage the Indy Panzer and the Leo, which are now running away. I really need my team to push with me, and this is why I'm spamming the minimap. Normally I wouldn't do this, but I'm trying to get the attention of all of them, and they're still not moving. I'm down to a one-shot for artillery if, they, if he decides to try to hit me, which I don't know if he has the angle or not, but I really need them to push with me here. This is a very bad situation for me to be in. I'm down to a one-shot for most of the enemy, vehicle, uh, enemy team, and I really need my team to back me up because I need to push forward. And the T-54 finally decides to start moving, but it's like he's taking his sweet time. <laughs> and again, I am spamming the map. It's not something that I like to do, but it's just so frustrating when the obvious thing to do is to push when you have the opportunity to, and they don't. We could have come down like a tidal wave and just completely crushed them and started to get on cap, but it's not what happened. Our guys are just taking their sweet time, and I decide I need to just push alone because I can't afford to wait. And it looks like this Indy Panzer decided to go on um, to run away while he had the chance. And that's kind of an indication that there's probably not much else here. The Artie gets lit, the one that was giving me a hard time earlier. And I have just a sliver, but I don't want to get myself lit right now. So he's looking at me. I decide to take the shot. I miraculously hit him, and I was able to get the kill by rolling quite high. So now our 9 line is completely fallen, and this is what I was worried about. This is why you have to take action. If you outnumber the enemy on either flank, you push forward with your heavy tanks, and <laughs> you take that flank and secure the win. Now hindsight, what I did here probably wasn't the smartest. I was trying to do my best. As you can see right here, there's still the SU, the Tiger was previously here. There's still a lot of vehicles that could potentially come back, because we're all lit right now by the Indy Panzer. And because of this, I know that we need to get in there and start capping. Now what I'm hoping is soft vehicles like the CDC, um, the T-34-3, the Tiger-1, I'm really hoping that they will jump on cap. Because if they jump on cap, I can plug at least one hole. I can sit here and I can hold back this tank destroyer from coming back, I can hold this Indy Panzer from coming back, whatnot. But <laughs> the CDC is going towards the cap now. The T-34 is going towards the cap now, and the Tiger is also going towards the cap. And I'm thinking, okay, we got this. This should be an easy win, and they should jump on the cap. And I see the Indy Panzer is the only other threat here, and I aim a little bit to the right of his gun, and I'm able to take him out. And now, all of a sudden, this SU appears in front of me, and... You know, the SU has actually a pretty decent gun, and I really don't want to get myself killed. And while I'm engaging this guy, I suddenly realize that the T-34 and the CDC are not capping, they are pushing out into the entirety of the enemy team, and now the enemy is capping. I have no idea why they didn't jump on cap when they had the chance, but the SU is running away, and I realize, crap, we need to capture, because if we don't capture now, we're going to lose. And so I turn around to start capturing. Now the CDC is saying, let's cap. It's like this little light bulb went on his head, like, oh, geez, guys, we're going to lose this. But by here, by now, if they had cap started capturing before when they were on cap, we would have already won. But now I'm having to turn around, turn my back to a very quick tank destroyer, which is something that I don't like to do. And I'm forced to get on cap myself because we need all the people on cap as we can get. I don't want to sit here. I want to push all the way across because if something was to pop out right here, like this RU, for instance, I don't want to have my back toward towards him. So now we have 3 on cap. We have 20 seconds left, and I know that the SU is a very quick tank, and this RU is quickly approaching. I don't necessarily want to turn my back to either of them, and so I have to just stay in this position, which is kind of awkward. 
and the CDC is very exposed in the instance that this SU pops out. And I don't want to risk getting hit by a Hesh round, or not a Hesh, a Hep round. And so I kind of sit back. Fortunately, he's shooting heat, we're able to take him out. And now this SU is aiming for a Tiger who has all the cap points. And so I pull forward, hoping to take the aggro and hoping that I can take the hit. And he puts one through my lower plate and we lost the game. So <laughs> not, you know, the most entertaining, I guess, replay, but I want to show you that this kind of stuff happens to good players too. All the time you can do all you can to carry a game. You know, I got 2,700 damage, 2,100 spot. I bounced over 2K damage and I'm still a dead smoldering wreck. <laughs> and these games are super frustrating and this is where, you know, people might argue that XVM is bad because if you use XVM, you know, you, you realize how bad the game is and you get frustrated. Yes, this is true, but I don't know. I still think that XVM is a great tool that you can use to read the enemy team and read situations as to how to carry a game most effectively. I did here almost 5k um, combined and I still was not able to completely win. We were off. If that SU had bounced me, we would have won the game. And hindsight, maybe I should have protected myself a little better, but I was trying to protect this tiger that was behind me because he was holding all the capture points. Anyway, guys, hopefully you found this entertaining. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you give it a like down below. And tell me below what you think about this game and what you do to carry situations like this and how frustrating it is for you. And maybe give me some tips on what you would have done differently in my situation to win this game. Anyway, guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, um, if you go ahead and do that, I'll be uploading more content here in the near future. <laughs> if I can talk here in the near future. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later.